Well, I'm originally uh, from Switzerland. I was born there, but I grew up in northern Italy um, in the city of Milan, and I went to medical school there. Um, and uh, uh, from pretty early on in medical school, I had a, a strong desire to combine great clinical care with great research. And I was given the opportunity um, to come to Mass General for about six months um, in 2008 to conduct some research. Um, some things must have gone right uh, since I was asked to stay for over three years doing research and I decided to complete clinical training in neurology, behavioral neurology and neuropsychiatry at Mass General. And I have now created a research program called the Aging and Brain Health Research Group at the Institute for Brain Health where we try to understand um, disorders of brain aging and how the brain ages normally uh, across a number of different disorders, whether it's dementia, stroke, depression, anxiety. And I'm very engaged with my patients and with my collaborators in trying to answer some of these important questions. The amount of disability and the amount of suffering that brain disease causes substantially. It's by far one of the most important public health problems and we are working really hard to develop cures and treatments uh, and there have been many successes but there are, also, there are also many areas where we still lack the ability to cure these disorders. Therefore prevention is substantial. If we could stop a disease before it even becomes a disease, before it even manifests, then the shortcomings in our ability to cure them when they're fully established, full-fledged problems becomes less relevant and we can change many lives for the better if they do not have a disease that we have no treatment for. I've always been interested by the way um, sort of like certain diseases and especially brain diseases run in family and in fact my a lot of my research has been focused on the genetic risk factors for brain disorders and brain health and I translate that into clinical care. I offer the possibility for, our, for individuals that have no symptoms, are perfectly healthy, but have a family history of a brain disorder, like dementia or stroke or depression, to come and see me for a thorough evaluation. And what, what happens during this evaluation is that I help them reconstruct better the type of family history that they have and what type of disorders may be involved and based on this information I explain to them how high their risk is compared to someone who does not have a family disorder which can be very variable depending on the specifics and I also provide them with the existing evidence on what uh, risk factors and what lifestyle changes affect the different risks depending on their family history and how effective they are. I give them some guidance in reviewing what the goals uh, should be and I also offer them the opportunity to connect with other family members that may be interested in joining us uh, both from a clinical perspective in getting some of this recommendation as well as in the, from a research standpoint because we're always looking for participants in our studies of brain health and brain disorders um, that have a high risk because of a family history. I feel people will be um, provided with a better understanding of what their brain does, how it functions, and what type of problems they may have or they may be at high risk of having. Um, and I hope that they understand better the way we as doctors and healthcare professionals approach the problem, but most importantly, how they can approach the problems. Little and big things that they can do, changes in their life, uh, that can impact their brain health for the better. And I hope that they also feel willing to engage us, in, engage us back. In, in other words, there's so much that we do not know about brain health and brain disease, and I hope that they feel encouraged by the fact that we have a mission to understand brain health to make it better, and that they feel like they're willing and enthusiastic to join us in, and contribute to our research.
I think the, the main, the cornerstone of patient care as far as I'm concerned is our empathy and understanding. And they have to go hand in hand and they need to go both ways. The physician needs to understand what the patient feels and is troubled by. And the patient must feel that the physician is on the same level and sharing the same concern and addressing the same problems. And from that degree of empathy, I hope and I strive to give both sides understanding. For the patient, understanding of how the doctor addresses a problem, how it's phrased, and what, how the solutions are generated. And from the uh, doctor's perspective, an understanding of what are the patient's barriers towards achieving those goals and so what are the actual problems as they manifest in the, in the life of the patient. The ability to have a conversation with a patient who has a complicated brain disease problem or a, or a complicated brain health problem, I enjoy the possibility of saying that we don't know what's wrong and nobody knows what's wrong, but that we're doing everything we can in order to figure it out with our research and that if he or she sticks with us, we're trying our best to make sure that we have an answer for that problem.